Welcome to the Bernoulli experiment. Bernoulli's principle is the widely used concept which relates pressure, velocity, and elevation between two points in an ideal fluid. The equation looks like such, where there is a pressure term, a velocity term, and an elevation term, but because the experiment will be performed on a horizontal plane, the elevation terms can be crossed out. Therefore, at any given point, the combination of the pressure term, which represents the static pressure, and the velocity term, which represents the dynamic pressure, will add up to equal a constant known as the total pressure. So in order for the total pressure to remain constant, if the velocity of the water increases, the pressure would have to decrease. This is the general idea behind the lift force on an airplane wing. Because the top of the wing imposes a constriction on the passing air, causing the air to travel a longer distance over the top of the wing. Due to the theory of continuity, the velocity in this region increases. As the velocity increases, the pressure above the wing drops, creating an uplift force which causes the plane to fly. Now that we understand the theory behind the Bernoulli principle, we can prove it physically in the laboratory. This here is the Bernoulli apparatus, which consists of an enclosed system possessing a large reservoir on the bottom, a pump which pushes the water in the clockwise direction, a venturi apparatus, piezometers, a measuring basin, and pipes to connect all these components in a closed loop. To begin the experiment, first fill the bottom reservoir to 10 centimeters below the top, because turning on the pump without any water in the reservoir will result in damage to the pump. Now the pump can be plugged into the power supply. Open the sliding valve between the measuring basin and the reservoir. Open the outlet valve and open the gate valve. However, keep the inlet valve closed. Turn on the power switch and turn on the pump. Slowly start to open the inlet valve all the way. At this point, all four valves are completely open and the flow is moving at the maximum rate. Open the black overflow valve completely. Carefully close the outlet valve until the piezometers have been flushed. Then reopen the outlet valve. Now open the white bleed valve and close the black overflow valve. For the remainder of the experiment, the overflow valve and the bleed valve will remain in this position. Now, the water must be regulated so that the water heights in the piezometers are within the upper and lower limits. This is done by first closing the inlet valve partially such that the levels in the piezometers begin to drop. Once this occurs, begin to close the outlet valve partially and finally adjust both the inlet and outlet valves so that all seven piezometer readings are within the limits. The goal is for piezometer height number one to be around 280 millimeters and piezometer height number three to be around 70 millimeters. The venturi apparatus acts as a constriction on the flow similar to the airplane wing example discussed earlier. As the cross-sectional area decreases within the venturi, due to the theory of continuity, the velocity increases, causing a drop in pressure. The first six piezometers from left to right measures the static pressure at six points along the constriction. Now, record the heights of these six piezometers. The seventh tube is actually a pitot tube instead of a piezometer, which measures total pressure as the opening is positioned parallel to the flow as opposed to perpendicular to the flow. Despite there only being one vertical tube for total pressure, the location of the reading can be changed by simply sliding the piece horizontally. First start by positioning the tip at the leftmost location. 
wait approximately one minute for the water height to stabilize before taking the reading. Then move the tip to the next position to the right. Wait one minute and then take the reading. Do this for all six positions. At this point, values were recorded for the static pressure at six locations and the piezometer heights match the theoretical graph. Values were also recorded for the total pressure at the same locations and the water column height matches the theoretical graph as well. As a reminder for this experiment, the total pressure should be higher than any of the static pressures. Now the flow rate must be determined by closing the sliding valve between the measuring tank and the reservoir. Wait until the water level reaches 20 liters on the gauge and at that point start a timer. Stop the timer when the water level reaches 30 liters, then make sure to open the sliding valve. Repeat this procedure three times to generate an average flow rate. Then, use the measured time and volume of water to calculate the flow rate. This completes the experiment for one flow, but it should be repeated for a minimum of two other flows. To do this, adjust either the inlet or outlet valve by turning only a few degrees to increase or decrease the flow rate, as long as the water column height stay within the upper and lower limits. Then, record the static pressure and total pressure for each of the six locations as done prior and re-measure the flow rate. This completes the Bernoulli experiment, but the following steps are required to shut off the apparatus. First, turn off the pump. Then, turn off the switch. Close the inlet valve. Close the gate valve. And open the outlet valve. In order to drain the piezometers, make sure to open the bleed valve and the overflow valve. It is recommended that the water in the reservoir is drained each week. Lastly, unplug the apparatus from the power source. This completes the Bernoulli experiment tutorial. Thank you for watching.